All right, everybody. What we're going to be looking at in this lesson is something known as factorials and partial sums, but particularly factorials. Now, what a factorial is, is it's a way of multiplying descending numbers in order. And they're used in a lot of things that require you to do uh, large permutations or combinations of things. Not something we will necessarily be getting into uh, for the purposes of our class. What we really need to understand is, first of all, what a factorial is and how do you evaluate a factorial. So like I said, a factorial is essentially a way of multiplying uh, you know, numbers in a descending order uh, and, and seeing what the product is. So this is, you know, what you see right here is a very kind of mathy explanation. Whatever number n happens to be, the next number that we multiply to it would be whatever that number is minus 1, and then whatever that number is minus 2, and so on. So here is a much uh, nicer example of uh, what a factorial looks like. So here we have 5 factorial. And that's what the little exclamation point uh, is. We just call it 5 factorial. Well, all of the natural numbers of from 5 going in a descending order would be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And so we multiply them uh, together. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 gives us a total product of 120. And that's what we would say as the, uh, the evaluation of 5 factorial would be 120. So, again, a factorial is just, you know, multiplying in descending order, uh, list of natural numbers. Now, some of these numbers can get pretty big, uh, particularly when you're looking at, you know, certain types of permutations that you might do. But for our purposes, we're really going to be focused on uh, kind of some simple ones, okay? Just knowing what a factorial is and how, you, how do you do its uh, basic operations. That's what we're looking at. <clears throat> So the, here we have two examples where we're asked to simplify it, or what I would rather say is more like evaluate the factorial. So in the example on the left, we have 12 factorial divided by 10 factorial. Now, right away, let me illustrate something that you should never, ever, ever do. Uh, because this is in the form of a fraction of 12 factorial over 10 factorial, some students are going to be very tempted to say 6 factorial over 5 factorial. Never, ever, ever simplify a factorial the way that you do a fraction. The way that you simplify a factorial is you have to actually write out their numbers in descending order. So 12 factorial is the same thing as saying 12 times... Uh, 11 times 10 times, ugh, I wanted to say plus there for a second. Uh, so times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And all of that is over 10 factorial, which is, you know, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Now, these are a fraction that you can actually simplify the way you normally do. Because everything in the numerator is being multiplied, and everything in the denominator is being multiplied. And a fraction at its most basic level is just a division thing. Uh, multiplication and division are considered the same as far as PEMDAS is concerned. So that means anything that has uh, is common to the numerator and the denominator that's being multiplied, uh, those all simplify. So, you know, the tens, nines, eights, and so on, all of those simplify to just be a one. So I'm left with just 12 times 11, which in this case is going to be uh, 132. And that's the proper way of doing a factorial. Now, let me simplify it uh, just a little bit further. We'll, we'll, uh, let's take a look at this, because writing out 
all 12 numbers in the numerator and all 10 numbers in the denominator, you're like, oh, that's a lot of writing, Mr. Pierce. Do I have to actually do all of that? And the answer is not always. So let's take a look at it again. 12 factorial over 10 factorial. So we're going to start, right, the same way that we did it in the first time. 12 times uh, 11 times. Now here I'm going to stop at 10 factorial because I'm going to have 10 factorial in the denominator as well. And when we expanded it all out, from 10 all the way down to 1, everything simplified. So that means 10 factorial over 10 factorial here, that just simplifies to be 1. And so we can stop and say 12 times 11, which will give me my 132. OK? So if the factorial of the numerator and the factorial of the denominator are common, uh, we don't have to go through the process of writing them all out to see the individual numbers that are being multiplied that simplify. We can just simplify the factorials themselves. So here, in the second example that we have, let me pick a different color so that way not everything is blending together because these are kind of close now. <clears throat> here we have two uh, factorials in the denominator. So we'll look at the numerator, which is 10 factorial. So I'll say 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And I'm going to stop at the 7 factorial because I have a 7 factorial in the denominator. So I'm not going to write them all out. So 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1. And 7 factorial is 7 factorial. So in the numerator, the 7 factorials, top and bottom, simplify to be 1 which leaves me, you know, just the 10 times the 9 times the 8 in the numerator over the 3 times the 2 times the 1 in the denominator. So now we can just multiply the values together and see what we get. Okay. So if we say uh, 10 times 9 times 8, which is going to essentially be divided by 6. Everything simplifies to be the number, oops, not 160, 120. Uh, got a 6 on the brain, because they said divide by 6. So this all simplifies to be the number 120. And just type those on your calculator. Say 10 times 9 times 8, uh, divided by 6, and there you go, 120. So happy little answers evaluating factorials, okay? So not a whole lot really to do with them. So, so again, if a factorial, like I said, is just a, uh, what we do when we multiply uh, descending natural numbers together. And uh, this is how we are evaluating them. So this uh, last thing that we're kind of looking at here as far as a factorial is concerned is to, uh, well, can we identify the first four terms in a sequence. And that's what it's saying up here at the top, write out the first four terms of, of the sequence. Meaning that uh, I'm going to substitute 1, 2, 3, and 4 into the uh, factorial expression and see what we wind up getting. So if I want to know what the first term is, uh, I'm going to say a sub 1, and I'm going to substitute the 1 anywhere I have an n. So I'm going to say 1 plus 3 factorial over 2 times 1 factorial. OK, well, the 3 and the 1 in the numerator, this is eventually going to give me a 4 factorial in the numerator over a 2 factorial in the denominator. And so that's you know 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. And that's where the numerator and the denominator have something in common. So the 4 and the 3 give me my first term to be a 12, OK? And so we kind of just do that for, uh, oops, all of them. Uh, so let me just pick different colors so they don't all blend together. So let's look at uh, the second term, a sub 2. So now I'm going to say substitute a 2 into the factorial expression, 2 plus 3 factorial over uh, 2 times 2. Ooh. That 2 almost came out like a 7. Let me clean it up a little bit. So 2 times 7, oh, 2, got 7 on the brain now. Uh, so in the numerator, I'm going to get 5 factorial over 4 factorial. 
And so 5 times 4 factorial is as far as we need to go to get a common uh, common term in the numerator and the denominator, the four factorials, uh, factorials uh, simplified to just be one. So now I'm at five. So that's the second term in the sequence. And we'll just alternate our colors here. So here, the first term in the sequence where I say a sub one, or a sub three, the third term, substitute three now. So three plus three factorial over two times three factorial. Well, this will give me a 6 factorial in the numerator and a 6 factorial in the denominator, and anything divided by itself always simplifies to be 1. So there's that. And our last number that we're looking for, the fourth term of the sequence, we'll say a sub 4. And so I'll get 4 plus a 3 factorial in the numerator and a 2 times a 4 factorial in the denominator. And here I'm going to get 7 factorial over 8 factorial. Now this is interesting because this is the first factorial that you've seen where the denominator is the bigger factorial. So how does that look? Well, the 7 factorial, if you wanted to, you could actually, you know, write it out the 7 times the 6 times the 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Uh, but we don't need to. So we'll say 8 times 7 factorial in the denominator, and you can see again now the 7 factorial in the numerator and the denominator simplify to be 1, so that simplifies to be 1 over 8. So the first four terms of the uh, factorial sequence that you see here are going to be 12, 5, 1, and 1 eighth. So those are the first four terms of this particular sequence. Now, one of the things that we're also going to be looking at in this lesson are partial sums. Okay, A partial sum is going to be a sum of a sequence where, well, we call it a partial sum because we have to stop at some point. Uh, we Mathematically, you know, theoretically, uh, a sequence or a series can be infinite, but at some point we're we got to stop. We can't actually count to infinity, so we can't add to infinity. So uh, what we're going to be looking at here is we want to know well, what is a partial sum of something. And we'll kind of look at uh, this S with a subscript notation to say, well, okay, well, I want to know the sum up to, say, I don't know, the seventh number. So if I want to know the sum of up to the seventh number, I would say S sub 7, and then I would take whatever the first term is, that's an A, uh, plus whatever the second term is, third, all the way up to the seventh one. And whatever that is, it's just going to be a single number. We're just adding positive or negative numbers uh, together at this point. Okay, So that is what a uh, partial sum is going to be. Partial sum of a sequence will... Like I said, we're only going to be looking at it, well, let's start here and stop here, because we may not be interested in all of the potential numbers that we have. We only are concerned about it from here to here. So uh, now the nice thing about it is that as you start doing partial sums and, and, and of uh, sequences, you don't always have to start with the first one. You could say, well, I want to know what is the sum from the uh, 27th term through the 50th term, and, and there's ways of doing that, and we will use these types of notations uh, to kind of help get us started. So here we have, oh, look, seventh uh, term. Okay, so that's exactly, uh, didn't mean to pick seven again, but okay, well, it is what it is. So here we say, well, what is the sum of the first seven numbers of this uh, sequence? Well, uh, we're going to just start substituting numbers in here, so we're going to just say, you know, we're, we're counting with our natural numbers here, so the first one would be, uh, we'd say, you know, a sub 1 plus a sub 2 all the way up to our uh, seventh one. So here I'm going to say 1 squared plus, because, and we're squaring them because that's what the uh, expression says. It says n squared. So I'm going to say 2 squared, and we'll do this all the way through oops, squared to the fourth. 
It will do this uh, all the way through the first seven numbers. So this is 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, and 6 squared, and finally 7 squared. So this is what we're going to take the sum of. So you just say, well, this is 1 and uh, 4, 9, and you can probably just type these on the calculator. You don't really need to actually square each individual number. Uh, so we're going to just say 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 and so on, and we will get a sum of 140. And there you go. Now that was a pretty simple uh, sequence, meaning we're just taking you know, the first seven numbers, squaring them, and then adding them together. Uh, but primarily what we wanted to look at is, that, well, the notation. Well, the S is talking about, uh, S is talking about sum. The subscript of seven says we want the sum of the first seven numbers of this particular sequence, where I'm taking my first seven numbers and squaring them. Well, here we have kind of the same thing, but not quite a, a nice as a sequence. Well, here, uh, we're only going up, we're adding the first four uh, numbers that we get out of this particular expression. So I would say S sub 4, and we start counting at 1. So that's our first number that we put into our sequence. Kind of think of it as a, you know, a table, like an XY table. Okay, the first number, that's your first input number, that's 1. Okay, and your output number is whatever we get when we plug the numbers in. So... Uh, here I'm going to say 1 over 1 plus 1, and we'll go to the next one. So now I'm going to substitute the number 2 in. So I'll say 2 over 2 plus 1. The third number in the sequence would be a 3, so I'd say 3 over 3 plus 1. And then finally, the fourth would be a 4 over 4 plus 1. Now this is uh, a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say tricky, but again, there's fractions here, they're not going to have a common denominator, and if we don't have a calculator that can help us figure out what the common denominator is, uh, some of us may look at this and go, oh no, not fractions again, but they're really not that bad. So here we have 2 over 3, plus 3 over 4, plus 4 over 5, so you can see as we're summing the numbers, we're actually getting closer to the number 1. Uh, we won't actually get to the number 1, but uh, we're getting close to the number one as far as each fraction is concerned. Now, here we, if you know, you have to have a common denominator. So if you don't have a calculator that can help you do, you know, a common denominator, the smallest common denominator that we have in this case is going to be uh, the lowest common denominator between all four of these numbers, the four, the two, or the two, the three, the four, and the five. The lowest common denominator in this case is a 60. So that means I'm going to multiply the first fraction top and bottom by 30 and the next fraction top and bottom by 20 and here by a 15 and this last one by a 12. So that would give me you know, 30 over and we'll just put everything over 60 uh, plus 40 plus 45 and plus 48. So if you say add the numerators together, the 30, the 40, the 45, and the 48, we're going to get 163 over 60. And that would be the sum of the first four numbers of that particular sequence. And that's really all there is uh, to the partial sums. We're not really getting into anything too crazy here. Remember, so again, just to kind of quick recap, Factorials are a process of multiplying uh, natural numbers in descending order. Uh, and if we have a common factorial to the numerator and the denominator, then we can simplify them. However, we cannot simplify factorials that are written as a fraction the way we would normally write them as a fraction. So if the example that we started with 12 over uh, 5, we cannot simplify that to be 6 over uh, or 12 over 10, we can't simplify that to be 6 over 5. We have to actually see, well, what are the actual numbers of the factorial. And then partial sums where, well, I'm just saying, I, I want to add up the first so many numbers 
of this expression, whatever they happen to give me, and whatever the sub subscript of the S is, well, that's how many numbers we're taking the sum of. So the first example, we had S sub 7, so I added the first seven numbers. This last example, I had S sub 4, so I had the first four output numbers of this sequence, and that's it. So any questions that you may have had as you were uh, watching the video, please make sure you uh, take the time to write them down and bring them to me when you see me in class or in tutoring. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.